The Cry of South Africa by Olive Schreiner is an IEB poem and there are a few elements on this Prezi that I won't be using for this video and one of those is this song so I'm going to skip past it and read the poem. Give back my dead, they who by cup and fountain first saw the light upon my rocky breast. Give back my dead, the sons who played upon me when childhood's dew still rested on their heads. Give back my dead, whom thou hast riven from me by arms of men loud called from earth's farthest bound. To wet my bosom with my children's blood, give back my dead, the dead who grew upon me. And underneath the poem, she wrote Wagner's Kral, Three Sisters. And what's really important here is the date, May 9th, 1900, because it tells us a little bit about the context, about what we might want to look up about the time that she wrote it. You'll notice that there's a QR code on this page that takes you to a Mentimeter, which we will ignore for this video. So Olive Schreiner is a well-known South African poet. She was a feminist and really quite a firebrand, somebody who we can still admire today. And she was something of a trailblazer. She was a feminist, a writer, and an early campaigner for women's rights. She wrote the introduction to an early and well-known work of feminist writing, A Vindication of the Rights of Women by Mary Wollstonescraft. Schreiner was known to be a pacifist and a supporter of African and Boer rights. Both were persecuted at the time by British imperialism. She is one of 12 children, and her brother, a governor in the Cape, also believed in equality. Her friendship with Cecil John Rhodes soured and she wrote a satirical piece deriding him and the friendship soured because of a flogging bill that he supported. She held radical views for the time about free thinking, extramarital sex and rejected Christi Christianity at quite a young age. So she had quite radical ideas for the time if you think about patriarchy and the quite conservative views around about the turn of the century. She was almost arrested as a prostitute in London because of her frequent male visitors. She married at the age of 38 and she married a man named Samuel Conright, um, who actually called himself Samuel Schreiner Conright. So he took on her surname and that indicates that there was an enormous amount, amount of respect in the marriage. And he um, eventually had his uh, remains buried with hers and with their, with their young child. Um, their child died um, at one day old um, and wasn't named. And they had a few miscarriages, but no other children. She was an intelligent woman who suffered from poor health. She also suffered from depression, so her writing helped her with that. Um, she was mostly self-educated. And worked for a while as a governess, but as I said, it was her writing that really helped her deal with her depression. And she's very well known for her um, story of an African farm. She spent time in a concentration camp because of her support of the Boers. So she really did understand what it was that um, she was writing about. She felt very strongly about it. Women are parasitic and society robbed them of all forms of active, active conscious social labour, reducing them like the field tick to the passive exercise of their sex functions alone, she said. So this is her famous anti-war war poem written during the Boer War or the South African War. I'm going to read it again for you. And this time I want you to think about the impact of the punctuation and the diction because I want to go through um, the lines more slowly and look at that more clear carefully. Give back my dead, they who by cup and fountain first saw the light upon my rocky breast. Give back my dead, the sons who played upon me when childhood's dew still rested on their heads. Give back my dead whom thou hast riven from me by arms of men loud called from earth's farthest bounds to wet my bosom with my children's blood. 
Give back my dead, the dead who grew up on me. So the first three lines, give back my dead, they who by corp and fountain first saw the light upon my rocky breast, conjure up quite beautiful images. One thinks about the light just above the corp and the picture that I found shows a picture of some corpies and the light coming up. And so the, the image of a breast is actually quite an apt one for a corpy. And it also helps us to think more, more carefully about who the speaker might be. So the speaker is saying, give back my dead. And I've included some pictures of a Boer mother uh, and her children in a concentration camp during the war and some uh, Boers in front of a kopi um, with their weapons. So who is the speaker and how do you know? And why does the speaker refer to her breast? And so if one thinks carefully about it, the, the Boers generally and also some of the black South Africans living at the time were also detained in concentration camps. But that seems to be uh, who she seems to be speaking about because of the time that she wrote the poem, what was going on at the time, and the fact that we know that she supported the Boers and, um, her, and the fact that she, in, in, in fact, was also uh, incarcerated in a concentration camp for some time. Why does she speak of first seeing the light on her breast? What does it mean about her relationship with her dead? And I see this as quite an intimate um, idea, this, this idea of breast and then first seeing the light on her breast. Um, it, there's a closeness between a mother and a child. And also the, the fact that the children, the, the Boer children and, and men and women would have been born in South Africa and so they would have been able to relate to this extended metaphor, this mother metaphor uh, of South Africa as their mother and that's where they would have first um, seen the light um, as in the, the, the dawn, the South African dawn and, and perhaps also understood the truth of their situation um, if we can take a liberty and extend it um, and look at the potential wordplay. What do you notice about the structural elements like repetition and punctuation? Well, the, the repetition of give back my dead uh, is emphatic. It tells one that South Africa wants um, the fighting to stop and wants her children back. And it's a demand one, one, it's one that can't be be met or answered satisfactorily. It's an imperative, and the exclamation mark um, foregrounds this as well. And so, if we look again at that. Give back my dead. That very first line serves to open the poem, and and it's said at the end of the poem as well. Give back my dead, the sons who played upon me when childhood's dews still rested on their heads. So again, we've got this idea of childhood, um, childhood's dews when young, they've been there their entire lives. And so South Africa wants her sons back, the sons who have lived there all their lives, who belong there, uh, it seems to imply. The diction is important in this stanza. And again, we noted which line is repeated. Give back my dead. The emphatic call, the repetition. What is the impact of words like sons and played and childhood's Jews? Well, it helps us to remember that South Africa is being personified as a as a mother, a loving mother, and she is, um, and she wants her her children back. And so, words like sons and played and childhoods um, remind us that these these people are vulnerable like children are vulnerable they need their mother's protection and the mother cries out um, at the injustice and she wants her, her children back and then the jew we think when we think of jew we think of the jew uh, at dawn on on plants wetting um, their heads so jew is not literal how does the metaphor position us to feel well, we think again of their youth and vulnerability and it links also um, later to to the
the blood that would have soaked into the earth at their deaths. Um, I found some pictures. At the top again, we have some black South Africans in these concentration camps. Um, uh, uh, over 14,000 black South Africans were thought to die, have died in the camps. And at the bottom, you can see an emaciated young Boer girl. And you can see a mom and, and her very un, unwell uh, child um, also in this Boer camp. And one in four people were thought to have died um, Boer Give back my dead whom thou hast riven from me. By arms of men loud called from earth's farthest bound to wet my bosom with my children's blood. And so that's what I was referring to, um, the children's blood. And so the Jew picture is one of, of youth and, and a dawn and the beginning. And uh, now we, we have her bosom, the earth wet with her children's blood. Uh, give back my dead is the line that is repeated again. And whom thou hast riven from me. This idea of riven, of being torn away from one's mother. By arms of men loud called from earth's farthest bounds. So the diction is important. And the implication of this word riven. One would think about a child being ripped away from her mother. And arms is a pun because... Um, obviously arms could or might be the arms pulling the, the child away but might also be weapons and so the weapons are used to do that um, who are these men who have come from earth's farthest bound well, well they're the men the British soldiers and um, bound could also be a pun if one thinks about uh, boundaries um, from earth's farthest bound from far away but one might also think about the bound a step one's um uh one's pace one's a bound to jump to to walk the diction in the last line is also very powerful it extends the metaphor and is a picture of a mother's pain and love and i've asked if you can explain why and also note the repetition and punctuation so to wet my bosom with my children's blood is is very emotive and again, that word bosom links to breast. There's that intimate bond between mother and child. The mother nurtures the child. The earth, South Africa, nurtures her child on her bosom and nourishes her child on her bosom. And um, the British uh, soldiers have wet her bosom with her, her children's blood. Their blood has soaked in um, to her soil. It's very, very emotive diction, riven bosom, children's blood, and then of course the exclamation mark, which again um, really emphasizes this mother's pain. Give back my dead, the dead who grew up on me. And so the final lines serve to frame the poem because um, the poem ends uh, the way that it begins. And um, these pictures are pictures of, this picture's a picture of children, um, Boer children. Okay, so this is a picture of three sisters, um, or at least one angle of it. Um, and this, uh, these are the lines at the bottom of her poem, Wagner's Kral, Three Sisters. So the three sisters are a land formation near Victoria West nor in the Northern Cape, comprising three distinctively shaped hills, which we've already um, discussed uh, the how they link um, perhaps this idea of copy and earth and land linking to the breast and shape of a bosom. The farm on which they are situated in the nearby railway siding are also named Three Sisters. The hills or copies, as they are known locally, are topped with dolerite and are nearly identical in appearance. They can be seen just to the east of the N1 highway, roughly 75 kilometers outside of Buford, Buford West, north of the junction of the N1 and the N2 highways. The date is important. It tells us when the poem was written and the Boer War was between 1899 and 1902. So it would have been a year in and it helps us to determine her concerns, which we know would have been quite personal because um, she herself stayed in a concentration camp for a time. And then this is where um, Olive is buried with her husband and daughter, the, the one, one day old daughter who died. 
Um, so this is her sarcophagus and the wonderful view that it overlooks. And that is The Cry of South Africa by Olive Schreiner.